Uniontown, Alabama, is a quiet town in the heart of America's Black Belt. And residents say they are being poisoned by the very air they breathe, the water they drink, and the lives they are trying to live. We're not breathing the same air. We are breathing hazardous air, harmful air. We shouldn't have to suffer this way. Situated just miles from a key marker of the civil rights movement, residents say they are now facing a different form of racism, environmental injustice. Uniontown is, is, is so engulfed in, in, in love, so much love that it is painful. It is painful because of what's happening there. The population of Uniontown is almost 90% black and has a per capita income of just $10,934. And they say that's the reason they have been fighting battles against a local dump accepting coal ash and an antiquated sewage system with little help from local or state government for years. So they said you were free in this world, but it seemed like some of the things that are done to us are still blacks and people live in poverty is still motor, you know, it's just environmental racism. I mean, everything that goes around here is a civil rights issue. I mean, anything from the lagoon to the landfill to the cemetery, everything is, is a civil rights issue. Now this joined Senator Cory Booker on a fact-finding mission to Uniontown. We spoke to residents and activists about life in the area. This is their story. There are graves all across this. This is a historical graveyard that was given in 1858 to the blacks. Arrowhead Landfield opened in Uniontown in 2007. Today, a mountain of trash from across the U.S. overlooks a historically black cemetery. Yeah, they made a big wide road. You see how that, them used to be trees, and they made it right through there. And my dad said, this is where the graves are. It's graves all down that line, because a lot of the graves don't have headstones. Green Group Holdings now owns Arrowhead Landfill, and while they don't own the cemetery property, in 2016, they pledged to work with the community to preserve it. They're supposed to be maintaining this. They said, well, we'll maintain this cemetery. We said, the people said, okay. But have they maintained the cemetery? Look at it. They bumped it and we said, okay, that was a mistake. Then, they, then later on, Oh, they own this place. I said, how can you own my people? These are where my peoples are. Well, we own it. How do you feel about it? How I feel, I feel that it's wrong, the lack of respect. And I feel like that's the landfill right there. And you don't care enough about my ancestors because I love my community and you do this. More than just disrespect, residents say the landfill has brought even bigger, more immediate challenges to their health. So on top of all the garbage from 30 states that's being brought into your community, um, you also have four million tons of coal ash. Yeah. The story behind Uniontown's problems with coal ash began a few states over. In 2008, a dike in Harriman, Tennessee containing coal ash ruptured. The spill released 5.4 million cubic yards of coal ash into the surrounding area. The coal ash waste, which contains materials like mercury, cadmium, and arsenic, made a trip of over 300 miles to the landfill in Uniontown. Taking that from a white area, the white people didn't want it. Let's just keep it 100. If the white folks ain't want it, why do you think it's good enough for the blacks? Harriman, Tennessee is almost 90% white. Uniontown, Alabama is almost 90% black. Even with materials like mercury, cadmium, and arsenic and coal ash, the EPA does not classify coal ash as hazardous material, which frustrates and concerns Uniontown residents. We have a lot of question mark and we have a lot of our everyday fear because, you know, you're wondering, EPA said it's not hazardous and you're just wondering, is it hazardous, is it not? But your everyday life is fear, fear of something somebody else didn't want that comes to your area. Um, my family lives on that road on my mom's side. Uh, my uncle Sonny passed away and I can remember this. He told me, he said, baby, I didn't get sick until they moved that coal ash in there. You know, just talking about coal ash, what did you take out of coal ash to not make it hazardous? If, if 10 people in, the, in, in a 
five mile radius are all dying from kidney failure, there is something going on in that particular area that is far greater than them just being old and sick. That a lot of people feel, especially that lived around there, that it was a hazard to their health. And, and to this day, I, I do believe my Uncle Sonny when he said, when they came in, it made them sick. The landfill has said they are disposing of coal ash safely and responsibly and has sued four Uniontown residents for defamation for describing their experience living near the landfill. The $30 million lawsuit has since been dropped, but clearly problems remain. Yeah, because right over here by this tree, do you want to walk over there? I can show you an old, old headstone. I'm sure I'd love to see it. Okay. They keep moving it for some reason. So this, we don't even know what this is marking. They just, no, they just, they just, they put it back here. It wasn't here many times we walked out here. And it said Rebecca Davis, born February 25th. No, you can see it's just been cast here. This has not been sitting here for a long time. No, 1880, 1882, and died February 25th, 1925. It's just a lack of respect, you know what I'm saying? And then by me being black, I just can't. I can't hate though, because I have to keep my eyes on what, I, what I'm looking for, I'm looking for justice. On the other side of Uniontown, residents are faced with another environmental issue, an antiquated sewage system. We had an outhouse out back of the home. We don't, we don't do that anymore. That's basically what we have here. It's just a more technical way. Instead of a wastewater treatment plant, human waste and city sewage is collected in a lagoon. So when the holding pond gets filled, the spray field, from my understanding, relieves the pressure off the pond, and it just kind of sprays it out in the air to have the ground soak it up. Uh, this is uh, yeah, where pond the pond waste pond pond comes from the lagoon, I mean, I mean, sprayed I mean, on top of the ground, and the secondary treatment. And um, what kind of waste are we talking about? Human, uh, human waste. Yeah, so, this is the yeah, city sewage. In theory, water from the spray field would be absorbed into the soil and go through the water cycle. But the soil in this part of the black belt is clay heavy, meaning that the sewage sprayed out over the field can't percolate into the ground. Instead, it sits, and even worse, potentially slides off the spray field and into a river, contaminating the water for everyone downstream. You know, I, I, I even tell my friends sometimes, tell people, hey, if you use the restroom, why, why flush it down the toilet and play, pay a water bill? Just throw it out the back door. Just take a bucket and sling it out the back door. It's probably, I mean, that's, that's, that's kind of what's going on. This is the 21st century. And at some point, some way, they should have figured out some kind of way to solve most of it, if not all of it. When we spoke to Uniontown residents, a lot of them pointed to socioeconomic factors to explain why almost nothing has been done to address these problems. It's environment injustice, it's environmental oppression. Environmental racism. I mean, there's rape, hello racism. It's out there. And I, don't, I don't mean racism as, as we think of slavery and chains and whips, but again, environmental injustice is just as racist as, you know, as slavery to me, because your health is your wealth. You know, so because if you try to enslave me, I have a chance to escape because I can try to defend myself. But if I can't breathe <laughs> or if I can't properly dispose of my waste in my body because my kidneys are failing, then, hey, you got me. You got me. Residents will tell you you'll find crumbling roads in Uniontown. You will see a rundown Main Street, a town that is struggling to thrive again. But what you won't find is anyone about to give up. They say change is coming. We say slowly but surely. <laughs> I love where I am, and I love the people. They are, and I can't ever say it enough. Any time's our baby. So we, we feel like it's a, we owe this city itself to, to see, you know, to do right, to do better. As a little boy growing up, I always wanted property and to build my own house. I have achieved that. So why should I let anybody else reign on my dream? If I, can, if I have an opportunity to stop that, then I'm gonna take steps to stop it. Even individuals who can leave, they don't want to because that's their home. And they shouldn't have to leave. So until, how they say, the fat lady saying, we're in the fight.
weigh in. <laughs>